Are you struggling to move past a relationship? Trust me, you're not alone. On today's episode, we're talking about soul ties, red flags, and handling rejection on this episode of Coffee with Tea. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I'm your host, Tanya Tyler, and I'm excited because we have our relationship go-to woman back on, Ms. Tonda Mingus, who will explain to us more as we dive into soul ties, but we're going to actually catch up and see what has been going on and see where we can go with our new nugget of relationships. So without further ado, here's Ms. Tonda Mingus. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hi, Tanya. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Good to be here. So what's been going on since the last time we talked? I know we talked about soul ties where you're going to bring us some more juicy nuggets about relationships and stuff. So what's been going on and what are we going to talk about today? Well, let's see. As far as what's been going on, probably too much uh, (laughs) to handle (laughs) because I'm trying to keep up with my my blogging. Um, I had to send uh, Kiki's Critique like three different articles just to get ahead of you because it's just every week is something stopping me so there's a lot been going on just trying to keep up with uh the youtube and the relationship stuff and because i study uh before i do anything as far as whatever i post um i i study about it because i don't know the man side of everything because i'm not a man right i'm a right, woman right. <laughs> so, so i don't i don't want to get on Um, and ever make people think, well, she knows what she's talking about when it comes to men and she doesn't know squat, you know? So that's pretty much uh, what's been going on. As far as uh, what I want to talk about today, I think we can kind of expound on where we left off with the soul ties if you want to. And um, because I just posted a video yesterday about uh, shutting the door and leaving the door shut. So that definitely ties into the soul tie thing. I just had a, an experience that I had to make a decision on. So right, yeah, I, we can talk about that if you want to. Well, I'm, I'm, I do. I, I would like to. I'm having a hot moment here. Um, so <laughs> what, what I really wanted to actually, for those who didn't hear the episode first, explain to us a little bit what soul ties before we what soul ties mean and then that way we can dive into a deeper conversation because like i said i always try to keep people informed of what we talk about and where we can go with this conversation okay well first of all a soul tie is like an attachment to a person and it can be a good soul tie uh which are in friendships a lot of times just platonic friendships um or it could be a soul tie in a relationship, which can be a toxic situation where you can't get out of it because this person has deceived you, number one. Um, and once you allow physical connection to occur, uh, you kind of release those soul ties to one another. And then it's hard to get away from that person. Uh, we don't always know how to uh, release that person from our lives. and so. Uh, there's this continuous game of, you know, letting them in and and then closing the door and then letting them back in because they keep coming back because we allow them to come back. Right, so. right. Yeah, like I like said, so I, I, lear- I learned a lot because for those, I think we dove a little bit. It's like, I'm a two-time divorcee. And so it's like, and I had to keep looking at a little bit. And I don't think we really dove into it. Look at myself mm-hmm. because I had to figure out who was I attracting and why do I keep attracting this kind of person? So absolutely. Uh, and I think that might tie into a little bit of the soul ties and stuff like that. But yeah, like you said, once we get physical, it takes it to a whole new level. <laughs> yes, so, absolutely. So I know you talk about shutting the door. So what does that mean? And how does that look? Well, let me get, let me give you a little scenario. Okay. I just recently did something really crazy. And this is, and this, this is where women, we do things to ourselves sometimes, you know, it's, it's easy, it's easy to blame the men all the time for everything. But when a person has been a part of you for so long, and in your mind, if they would just get their act together, you know, 
we could do this. You know, if that's in your mind, um, even though you feel like you totally let go of that person emotionally, sometimes, you know, you, it, it's, it's, it's like a devil or something like chasing after you. And so sometimes you'll get this feeling where, okay, I'm just going to text him and I just want him to know, you know, yeah, let, let's, let's just be cool. You know, I'm not mad at you. And it's kind of what, what we think is like closure. We look at it as closure and it's going to make us feel good. But what really is going to make us feel good is whether or not they respond to our text message or our phone call. Um, so I, <laughs> I have a bad habit of this. But in all honesty, though, I'm going to be honest about it, um, I do like closure. I don't like things to be just open. And uh, I've had an issue with someone that before I cared about. Um, so I will contact that person after all of the anger is gone because, you know, you get through all of that. So there's no need to bring that discussion up anymore. But I text this person just to let him know um, I know the way things ended because it, it, it was bad. It got bad. <laughs> and um, I know some things were said, you know, but I was letting him know that um, I'm, I'm okay. And I hope you're okay. And I wish, you, I wish you the best, but here's the truth, okay? The truth is, is that I wanted him to say something to let me know, it's kind of like a validation to let me know that, um, what happened didn't happen because of me. I wanted to hear it from him, you know, instead of already knowing that myself. And what ended up happening was, um, I, he, he, he texted me back and he did say, you know, something nice, but then there was no more contact. But then a week later, he sends me a text message and he offers me a position in his company. Well, I had been working for him not too long ago. Um, you know, just some side work. And um, he was training me, actually. Uh, he was kind of grooming me to, to, to work for his company later on. Well, I quit, you know, uh, <laughs> and, I, and, for, and for good reason. So, Ms. Tana, we had a little bit of a disruption. And I know we were talking about um, how you open up the door. And I like how you brought up, it's like you were looking for, um, validation as to when you reached out to this person but it didn't it sometimes doesn't come back the way we expect it to so you're sharing with us that you got invited to come back to um a week later after you made this to the, the reach out to this person so um, i do apologize for our um disconnection and stuff like that so would you mind continuing your story sure no problem at all um what i was saying was that i got the uh, text message a week later and I was offered to come back to his company in which I left because of the circumstances and um, I at first initially I told him you know he, he, he said if you want to think about it then let me know by such such a date I said well, really there's nothing to think about because I could use the extra money first of all and then uh, second of all I kind of already knew what I was doing so he was going to um, give me some, you know, like one-on-one -on -one time, like four hours a day or so. And so, um, so I was supposed to start it this week on Monday, actually. And I don't know what happened, Tanya, but the next morning I got up, it was Tuesday. Um, and so I started thinking about it and I still was kind of going forward with it, but it just wasn't, something wasn't settling well. And I think it was a thing of me telling myself, like, what are you doing? Like, why, why are you doing this? And why did you even contact him in the first place? Uh, you, you left his company because of the situation. You know, it just wasn't a good situation. Okay, so by the time Wednesday came, I still was thinking on it and I just, it wasn't selling well Thursday came because that was the date he wanted to know. Um, and so I sent him a text message and I said, I thought about it. You told me I had until Thursday to, to let you know. I thought about it. I said, I've decided to decline on that and go ahead with the plans that I had already had set out for myself for the rest of the year. I said, thanks anyway. So he comes, <laughs> he comes back with, um, 
yeah, well, okay, good luck with those plans. So I knew he was a little upset. You know, I, I could, I could kind of read the the words, you know, the tone in the words, but I felt great though after I did that. Right, and I, you know what? This is, I think most women have done that kind of thing. You know, and like you said, I think you touched on it because we, you, you had a lot of little red flags going off in your head, like no, no, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, so often we ignore those red flags and yep. then we want to know why we're back in the situation that we're in. And I think yep. that's a good thing that you, you bring it up. It's like, we have to start learning to pay attention to those red flag warnings and stuff like that. So yeah. how, how do you actually like start, what, what would you say to a woman who's, who's in that situation? It's like, you, you know, you realize you keep going back and back and, and you reflect and you get out. How do you stay strong and, and pick it up on those red, red flags? Well, first of all, a soul tie is, is extremely hard to get rid of. That's first of all. So if you realize how hard it is to get rid of a soul tie, then you will also understand that no matter how hard you try or no matter how much you say I'm done, um, that temptation is gonna come. We get all kinds of temptations and you can either say yes to it or you can say no. But as long as you're aware of it, that it's gonna come, then it doesn't catch you off guard. Um, I was totally caught off guard in my own thoughts for me to even make that, that move to, to text him from the, the start. But what we have to identify in ourselves too, Tanya, is that um, especially if you're single, so you don't have anyone else in your life right now, we get lonely. And so uh, um, loneliness is like the, the um, what is it? Being idle is like the devil's workshop. Like you have to be aware of what's going on in your thoughts, in, in your life period, your, your surroundings, everything that you're doing, you have to be aware. And when you get those thoughts, just redirect them. Um, I was totally caught off guard, but I won't be again <laughs> because well, I, I thought I was done. I thought I was done. <laughs> and I think, and you know, I think like said, love, they always say love is the most powerful drug, right? So it's like, you're dealing with a, a love drug addiction yes. when, you're, when you're caught up in the soul tie, because mm -hmm. like in your, in your mind, you're like, I know this is not working, but your heart is like, but you're lonely or you, you find excuses to, to override that thinking brain that says, no, <laughs> we yes. don't need to go there. So like I said, it's like, I know you say being aware and I know that's a hard, hard, you know, thing to, to grasp, but mm -hmm. I know to become aware, there's things that we should be maybe like asking ourselves, like what, what is it that you're getting out of this relationship that keeps drawing you back? Maybe you can figure out what, what's empty and you can mm -hmm. find something else to fill it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this <laughs> one is hard because everybody has a different reason. I know for myself, um, this, this person, I have never felt a connection so strong. So people take for granted connections. Um, people take for granted how another can control your thoughts, they can control uh, how, how you're feeling, they can control um, whether or not you're going to allow them, you know, in and out of, of your life. They, they have this, I, it's, it's just really hard to explain. And so usually this happens though, when there's something going on on the inside of us, whether it's our self-esteem, um, because see, this is what I always say about myself and, and people, um, <laughs> people crack me up be because they look at the exterior, right? They look at how you speak. They look at the advice that you give others, um, but you really need to take yourself. They have no idea the things that you fight with so hard. And that's why you can come off and, and, and talk to people about what you do. Um, but there's something on the inside of us that will allow people to continue to abuse us. And so we have to know our worth. We have to know that we matter. We have to know that uh, we deserve the highest form of love. 
from anybody. And if we're not getting that, you know, if it's not reciprocated, uh, it, it, it's not worth it. And the worst, the worst form of, of hurting ourselves is when we allow that continuous rejection because it, it beats you down. It totally beats you down. So and it, it opens you up to the same hurt over and over and over again. So in a nutshell, we, we, we have to figure out what, what's going on with me. You know? Right, right. That's what, that's what I think that's what I was trying to hit too. It's like, there's something, there's something that's missing or something that's not whole or something that we haven't healed within ourselves that mm -hmm. allows us to keep letting that, that pain back in, to, you know, or that, that false happiness that we feel until you know we we realize like what this is not really what I wanted, and mm -hmm. I think it's, it's 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 an ongoing struggle for everybody, and it comes in different forms. Like I said, it, it could yes. be you know some people it's it's relationships, some people it's mm -hmm. food, some people yeah. it's people. It comes in so so many different forms. So, you know you know that's you talk about the relationship side but like so there's so many things that we we haven't healed from and we, we yes. keep allowing the the um others to um on the outside to fill what we need from within and i think that's a a, a real strong point that i loved that you brought up well the, the other thing that I, I i just thought about this is um i was i've been divorced three times and I was the one that left all three times. So I'm not used to rejection. And so I never had experience in rejection. And I think the whole thing, you know, we want what we can't have. That is such a true, true statement. And so I think that that part of it is just, I don't know how to handle rejection. Right, right. I, I, I don't have low self-esteem. Um, I, I think that all around, uh, I'm a, a, a decent person. I think I'm more than decent. Um, <gasps> oh, I'm having an aha uh -huh moment when you're talking because <laughs> it comes down to your your ego. It's like, how dare you reject me? You know? <laughs> it's like, that does not happen. <laughs> you yeah. do not reject me. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. There it is. And it makes you drive a little bit faster. Like, oh, yep. heck to the yep. note. No, he didn't. <laughs> there it is. You just said it. That was a, I that we all experience and it comes in so many different fashions. It could yeah. be work. People like, oh, I want to do business with you. What? You don't yeah. know who you deal with. <laughs> <laughs> but I think yeah. that's a red flag that if you have that that ego that pops up, there's something mm -hmm. there that has not been healed yet. Somewhere yeah. down there, it's like, where did you get rejected first? And these are no, never again. Yeah. Like I said, it's it's something <laughs> in our past that just keeps propping up. It's like, you know, it's okay to get rejected. I mean, it's not right. bad to say rejected. It's okay not. To, to, to um, get what you expect, because this is where I learned, and this is come, you know, I'm not going to dive too much into it, but it's like, when I ask for people to come on the show, if they say no, I, you know, back in the day, like, oh, I'm going to try best. Oh, they just don't know what they missed out. Then I'm thinking, wait a minute, right. let that go. There's 7 billion people on the planet. Right, if right. want to be on the show, God bless you. I right. keep coming on. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that's <laughs> one of the things you have to realize is like, and it, it happens with relationships and it happens mm -hmm. with business. That yes. you know, not everybody's going to fit into the form of what you're looking for. No, no. <laughs> That, that was Thanks for that we're down to the last few minutes, so we gotta continue this conversation again. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you you struck a call when you were like, "Oh, because I know how it is to be rejected." You were like, <laughs> first of all, you don't know who you were just rejected." Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an ego thing. That's an ego thing. Yes. That comes in. It's, it's a defense mechanism. Mechanism yes. says, "You know what? I, you just don't know." But um, I want. <laughs> I like I like that one because um really I want to <laughs> we touched a little bit and we're running out of time and I really want to let get it in like where can people find more information about you your blog and and your your YouTube channel where can we find more information about you okay well as far as the blog is concerned it's Kiki's Critique.com um I think Kiki puts our uh 
things out there once a week or either once every other week. Like I said, I got too much going on in my life, so I can't keep up with things. But you can catch me there. You can catch me on Instagram at Miss Tonga, the number two, and then the letter U. And uh, sometimes I will post on uh, Instagram my YouTube channel, like the whole thing. I'll put it on there because, you know, they have that long TV series. Uh, that way you kind of, it, it's an easy thing. You can get to it. And then on YouTube, you can simply type in teaming relationships. All right. Well, thank you, Miss Tana, for your wisdom and your, you know, your, I love to always invite you to come back and share some more. Absolutely. I love, I it. You, I love it. I love it. I love it. We were hitting the breakthrough and it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those who tune in, remember, feedback is always welcome. Email us if you have any guests and show ideas. And of course, if you're enjoying all the links that um, or all the comments that were brought up and you're enjoying it, please hit the like button. Remember, all the links that Tana will mention will be down in the description box. So please make sure you check out down below. And if you're enjoying the wisdom and insight that you should, everyone is sharing, please consider hitting that like button over there. And remember, take things in stride, go with the flow, and create your own path. And we'll see you back here on another episode of Coffee with Tea. So bye-bye. Share with us. What was one of your takeaways from today's show? Post your answers in the comments.